We are live. Episode 22. Guys, can you believe this? This episode, we are headed to Lisbon, Portugal. Going to talk to one of my good travel friends. A friend that I was actually supposed to be traveling with today. We are supposed to meet up yesterday. Uh, two days ago. Jeez, time's flying. Time flies when you're in quarantine. But uh, yeah, let's see. All right, Teresa's in. Let's head to Portugal. Waiting for her to join in. Let's see. And um, how we met. All right. So I'm Teresa. Um, I'm from Portugal, at home right now in Lisbon. Uh, and I met Brent in Texas. Heck yeah. <laughs> I was had you used was I the first couch surfing? It was the first yeah, couch surfing, were. Kind of, right? Guys, it was yeah. epic. Took her on tour and then we snuck into a couple of days later we snuck into the UT LSU football game. It was oh, unbelievable. So like fifty yard line, twenty rows up. It was an experience that I was not expecting for us to have, but luckily we did. I know. Oh. That's just what I was gonna say. It was so good because it was just so unexpected. Yeah. Well it was so funny. We were on Sixth Street, which is a very famous bar spot in Austin. We're watching the game, so I was like, you need to see a football game. You know, it's a, it's a Saturday in America uh, in the fall, which is a big sports season. And so I was like, you know, halftime, let's go. Let's see what we can find. We'll try. You know, I'm, I'm very good at sneaking into places that I'm not supposed to be. And it worked out perfectly. Oh, my gosh. And there was a silent disco after the game. It was, it was such a fun night. So, so Teresa, much fun. Um, tell everyone what's been going on in your neck of the woods. So, like, you really you ended up going home to surprise your parents. You've been traveling a very long time. Went back yeah. to Portugal just before the coronavirus really exploded in Australia. So let's hear what what's been happening, both how you got home and uh, what's been going on in Portugal. All right. So I started my travels in August. So first was Texas. I was in the United States, then I went to Australia, and then so I'd been away from from home for like uh, six six seven months. And I decided to go home and visit my parents. I just found like it's really cheap flight. I was just going to surprise all my family. I got, I got to Portugal. I was super excited to reunite with all my friends and family and do all those things. And then all of a sudden, like two weeks, two, two days later, everything is closed. And what, what was interesting, it was that it wasn't actually the government that told people, you know, stay home. We're closing everything. First yeah. of all, it was, you know, universities closed and these all other places started to close by, you know, their own choice. Yeah. And maybe a week later, the government said, so, okay, this is an emergency situation and now we're, we're closing. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. And so like you're literally, your timing could not have been better. I mean, no. like spot on, <laughs> so lucky. right place, right time, getting back home. What, like, I know. so what, like... So you're not totally on quarantine. A lot of like our our stores closed. So, what, what's it like so the thing is, everything is closed besides the essentials. Okay. So you are allowed to go, you know, as many times as you want to a supermarket. No one is going to check like how many times are you going out, and you can still go to public spaces like for a run or something like that. You yeah. just can go in big groups. Okay. Um. So. What's interesting is really saying that people are taking this so seriously that you don't even you don't have to make it a rule as to not to go outside. They're so, just not going at all, which is yeah. I mean, I'm quite surprised. I, I, I don't want to say this about the Portuguese, but I, I wasn't expecting this from the Portuguese. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I guess seeing Spain and Italy, it was like this. We we're so close and the situation was getting so ugly. I think we really understood the message and starting to be very careful. Yeah, yeah. I mean, talk about hitting close to home. I mean, literally right next door. So it's, uh, uh, it's, yeah. it's a good thing you guys got on top of it before before it got out of control. Kind of like my country back home. The United States are, are, are really playing catch up right now, which is uh, I know. So far. But it's interesting. Uh, really quick side note. Singapore, the prime minister had a mass, a mass address to the country today. And um, everyone is required to work from home except for the essentials now. So everything's closing. Oh, yeah, and that's true. Like, and he is discouraging everyone. Like, you basically can't hang out with anyone besides people that you're living with. So Singapore mm -hmm. is like, they said they're going to ease into it. And they're like, nope, we're, we're not waiting for weeks for this to spread. So it's luckily my quarantine ends tomorrow. So I'm able to go back outside. Oh, yeah, that's tomorrow. Right. But now I won't be able to interact with very many humans. 
um, which is okay. It, but it, like that's what I live for, so that'll be a struggle. But um, it's going to be an interesting month. They've announced that it's going to be a month, a month like this. So uh, let's hope after a month, Singapore has flattened the curve and they yeah. they open again. Um, it's so, better safe. Yeah. Sorry, it's best Definitely to go all the way. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Well, let's let's dive into let's dive into traveling in Portugal. Portugal yeah. has some amazing spots. You know, I've only been to two of the cities there. There were a couple that I really want to get to. Just ran out of time. In your opinion, what are the top three must see spots in Portugal? So, because Portugal is so tiny, I have to say, like, you have to visit the three biggest spots, which is yeah. Porto, our biggest city in the north. Then Lisbon, the capital in the center, and then, you know, that whole region in the south, which is just beautiful, which is called the Algarve. That's what I missed, and I'm so disappointed that yeah. I missed it. The beaches oh, no, are so very, very, very nice. There. Yeah. And so, with these cities, are there any specific things, like Porto and, and Lisbon, both really nice city. Porto, of course, known for its wine. Um, mm -hmm. what's, your, what's your favorite spot? You have a specific site to see in those two cities? I've actually never been to Porto. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. I did not know that. I know. I was there for like one night, just like having dinner. I had that, you know, that dish we talked about, the francesinha, which yep. is like that sandwich. Massive sandwich. Oh, yes. Yeah. Just, I, I had that and then that was it. So I was there for, but I mean, I heard such great things. <laughs> uh, Wait, you, like, literally, you literally amazing. went there for the sandwich and then left. No, no, no. So I was in a city nearby, like in a, okay. like in a sort of congress, something like yeah, that. Yeah. So I went there for yeah. So I went there for the sandwich and then came back. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, then still, that's a big experience you get in Porto. It's you know that's one of those bucket list items you, you gotta you gotta check off the block. What about okay? Yeah. What about specifically for Lisbon? I know your mom's a tour mm -hmm. guide there, so I feel like mm -hmm. you have the best knowledge ever. What are what are some of your favorite spots in the city? Oh, uh, so, I mean, it, Lisbon is just such, it's so rich in history, you know what I mean? Because we're such an old country. Yeah. Um, actually, fun fact, my mom just told me this the other day. We're actually, like, the oldest country in Europe, like, with the same defined borders since, so we're the, actually the oldest country in Europe. Oh, interesting. That yeah. That is a really good fun fact. That Yeah, okay, nice. Huh. Yeah. So, so yeah, this is basically what my mom teached me. <laughs> but um, so, so in Lisbon, yeah, because we have so much history, there's like all these really beautiful, huge buildings all over town, like churches, all those kinds of things. But my favorite part is Alfama. I'm sure you've been there. So it's like the center. Alfama. Yeah. So it's okay. like the center of. It's like the how do you say it? Like the cultural site. Yeah, yeah, like the, like the cultural like, center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all those hills. It's oh, yes. There's an amazing overlook. I've been to. I've been to that. Yes, yeah, so, so many all over the city. Yeah. yeah uh, so it's that's definitely my favorite part in Lisbon. Then you have a uh, blind near the near the sea with, uh, like I don't know, like three or four monuments. Also very beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, guys, it's a great city, and 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 just throughout the country, each city has. Very, I mean, Europe in general, there are very good walking tours. So, great way to uh, get to know these cities when you first arrive. Definitely do the walking tours, especially in Porto and Lisbon, uh, because like, like Porto is known for its bridges. There's some amazing bridges throughout mm -hmm. the city. Lisbon with that coastline, and just it's a, it's a fun place. There's a lot of streets you can almost get lost. It you can disappear. Uh, just it, it's fun. Like just don't have a plan for a day and just wander. Uh, because there is something different around around each block, um, and this, is it's that in, in in Porto or in, Lisbon? In Lisbon, Lisbon, in Lisbon. Oh yeah, right? yeah, Lisbon, exactly. It's the windy streets. Some of the streets are tiny, and it's fun. You'll you'll come up to some small spots and and find a place to drink beers with your new friends. So it's uh, exactly. it's the, Portugal was was really 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 nice. I absolutely loved it. What about so? What about food? Any uh, what what's a signature dish for you guys? Where to begin? Where to begin, yeah. Brent? When I was in Australia, all I could think of, like I just wanted to get home for this, which and my parents don't even think that I like it because I'm always complaining, but I missed it so much, which yeah. is the seafood. Oh yes, oh, yeah. I was missing. So it's like the seafood, the clams, the grilled fish, oh, so good. 
Um, how did, how then did you have. Better, did you find? Oh, sorry, one second. Did you find sure. seafood in Australia? How did it compare to the seafood back home? I didn't because the thing was I was only three months or so in Australia, a little over three months. So I was the whole time in the farm. Ah, so okay, you're too. Yeah. Experience, you know, like the fun part of Australia. I miss that. <laughs> <laughs> see the the farm life all right <laughs> but you got you you got enough working days to get a second year correct i did yeah thank god okay so that's yeah. so you can go back and try the seafood in, in year 2 of your your visa that's exactly. okay so and, so and the thing with, with with portuguese dishes it's they are not they are not particularly beautiful you should know that but don't like it's still very good it's like the flavors are amazing They might not look beautiful, but it's amazing. So the thing we like the most typical is the codfish. We have okay. it so much in here, and we have like I don't know a hundred different dishes, like uh, made with codfish. Okay. All I mean, I like them a lot. And then we have the cozido à portuguesa, which is probably the ugliest dish. I mean, it's like this huge pot of everything you can imagine. So it's like boiled potatoes, carrots, cabbage, meat. You even some people even throw like the pig's ears and feet in there, <laughs> but it's nice. like it's so it's been it's been cooked for like a bunch of hours. I've never done it myself, but yeah. it's like the final result. It's just so good. That is amazing. And what it's called? What? Say it again. Cozido à portuguesa, which is like literally like the Portuguese dish. Or... Ah. Literally the Portuguese. Okay, that's easy enough. Well, yeah. Really, yeah. What about okay? So what about weird foods? Are there any? I mean, pig's ears. That's that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Anything yeah. interesting, strange, think, specific to Portugal? So I don't think it's weird. Some people yeah. do, but we eat a lot of snails. Okay. Ah, you're on the coast. So, of course, you should. Yeah. Oh, it's it's so good. We eat a lot of them, but like some people in Portugal find it weird. Some love it. I I, I do love it, and. Yeah. I mean, What I can't really call, think. It's it's known as escargot. What do you guys call it in Portuguese? Caracóis. Caracóis. Ah, cool. Nice drink. Too. Yeah. Yeah, snails are <laughs> nice. But then, okay, we just we just mentioned it a couple minutes ago. But the sandwich in Porto, what is it? The Fran mm. Fran? Uh, how do you say? It's it? it's like, you know, French the little Frenchy, like little French girl. It would yes. be something like that. And it's just it's a ton of meats stacked up. Yeah. Sometimes with an egg on top and then covered in sauce. <laughs> An egg. <laughs> There's so like much. a lot of smoked meats. I think that's the thing to it. It's smoked meats. Yeah. 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 I mean, your cholesterol will be through the roof after just one. But if you get to Portugal, especially Porto, you need to try it. It's, oh it's, yeah, uh, you should definitely try it. You you can't you can't go to the city and not have it. I mean, there's gonna like every restaurant you walk past, they're gonna try to get you to have Thurs because each restaurant has the best one in the town. So if yeah. you really want to have fun, eat it many places as you can. And uh, you'll probably have to roll your way out of the city, but it's 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 a great sandwich. Yeah. So oh, what and the thing you can you sorry, I have to say this: yeah, yeah. the thing that yeah, you yeah. also can't miss, which is you, you'll have it's most popular in Lisbon in Belém, which is a uh, pastel de nata. You know, like that little what, what's it called, like custard tart. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Did you have that? Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So good. That's like Those this thing that you you tell all the tourists you have to have it, but it's like so worth it because it's really good. Yeah, and there's a lot. It was so strict. So um, I went to Macau, right? So Macau's in Asia. You take a ferry. You can get. It. That's where all yeah. the Chinese go to gamble. And there's. I know. Did you know that Macau was once part of Porto? I was gonna say it. Yes, <laughs> heavily influenced by Portuguese. Like right? uh, you guys own it at one point, right? And so. Oh yeah, it, I, it belonged to Portugal until like, I'm gonna say like, twenty years ago. That's it. The, the one that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so you see the Portuguese architecture, but then they have that same dish that that is sold at a lot of the casinos. <laughs> yeah. so it's, a, it's a good reminder. Oh, no, it's really good. That. I actually got one day. I have a taste of Portugal wines <laughs> in Asia. So uh, yeah, you can truly find it everywhere. The Portuguese, guys, I mm -hmm. think what the Portuguese, they know how to take over the world. Now they know how to take over, not necessarily hold on to the countries, but they were yeah. some of the most successful explorers way back. Then. I know. We're we're so tiny and like. I guess people nowadays are, are are starting to know more about Portugal, but I think I feel yeah. like a, a few years ago no one knew about Portugal. But at a point in history, we're so big, we like 
like so countries all over the world were part of Portugal, like Brazil, so many countries in Africa. We went all the way to Asia, you know, uh, Macau, we've been in India, all those countries. I yeah. mean, you guys, you and the Dutch, you guys knew how to sail around the world. I mean, yeah. you guys really did a good job. And that's why anybody watching, I mean, we're going to go, I think Brazil's tomorrow. Yeah, it's, Brazil's the next episode. That's, wow, I, that, that was accidentally oh, no done. But it's just like, that's the only country in South America, one, uh, one of them, that doesn't speak Spanish, right? So they, they still speak Portuguese. Yeah, so it's different than Portugal Portuguese, but it's that influence yeah. from Portugal since the... Since so the I'd August. say it's different as British English is to American English. Okay. So it's like same same language, a couple different words, and you know the accent is totally different. Yeah, and the slang, right? You guys don't do the yeah. yeah, the bang. That's that's only that's only Brazil, I think. Yeah, I that's, that's only Brazil. And I, said that and I got some weird looks from people. So uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the slang you learn does not correlate that well. But same same with Australia, same with British English. We we all yeah, have exactly those, those quirky words that we use. What okay? So what about stereotypes? What what stereotypes about Portugal are true? What are false? What come to mind? You, you tell me. Does does any stereotype come to mind? I don't know. Not really. I feel like, guys, like I tell you what. You guys we're, we're not known that. enough. For sure. You conquered so many places, but you kind of did it under the radar. Where you know, like people. I don't know. People still love Portugal, and Ronaldo has done so many amazing things for your country. Right? I mean, he's really put you guys on the map. Um, I know. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. I really. I don't know. Like when I think of Portugal, there really aren't many. Good wine, yeah. really good wine. The, the port wine, it's a dessert wine. I'm not a huge wine drinker, but mm -hmm. the port wine is very, very nice from Porto. Um, so mm -hmm. that, that, that was surprising to me. That's true. Uh, <laughs> gosh, yeah, what else? I, yeah, I, I really, I don't know. You, even though you guys conquer the world, you're still amazingly friendly. Like, <laughs> there's still great people in Portugal. Um, yeah, well, I, I, one was interesting. Well, just an experience. The, there was massive fight, like, there are huge fires sometime in the summer. I mean, that's, oh, that's a yeah. car. But my time in Portugal, we I, I did a blah, blah car um, from, where was I, Spain into into Portugal, and we had to drive mm -hmm. through them, and that was insane to see. Oh, that's, uh, that must have been so scary. Yeah, so it, that was like the big, we have fires every year. You just know it's going to happen. It's just like, but, it's, like, it's very similar to California, right? It was just, it's something that is going to happen. It's just a matter of Yeah, so it happens every year. But I mean, I think maybe a couple years ago, two, three years ago, it was really bad. Like a lot of people died. Yeah. Oh. Um, but I mean, it was just a lot of also bad organization, you know, because I was just in Australia. The fires were crazy out there, but everything was just so like, even though it was obviously not in control, it was at the same time, it was so under control, like people felt safe. You know what I mean? Yeah, right, right, right. Not interesting. Oh yeah, because you were there. How far, like how far were the fires from? You were quite close. Oh, you were, they were like right there, like the farm burned. Really? Oh, the farm that you were on, part of it got hit by the Australian fires. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like in a valley, you see? So like the two sides, so we were, there the two sides of the hills both of them on fire in at different times so yeah. it was we're not stuck in there but um so yeah it, it it went down and burned the farm jeez so did you guys sorry i know we're supposed to be talking about portugal but let's dive in australia oh, no, that's right. what like did you guys have an evacuation plan i mean what did the farm what were they telling you if the fires came to close what the heck were you we supposed to do yeah so we were super upset about this because yeah. no one was telling us anything. So we could see the fire is like from, I would go to sleep at night and I would look out the window and like the fire was right there. So in that sense, it was a bit scary because no one told us like what the plan was. Like it yeah. was just like, we, we didn't even own cars. So if you wanted to leave, we would have to, I don't know, steal a car. I have no idea. <laughs> or steal one of the horses that you were training. Just hop on one of the horses and ride it out. Oh no, I would never. They were crazy, crazy horses out there. <laughs> <laughs> but um so i guess at the same time we felt safe because the firemen were there all the time okay that's good yeah so, so i mean we figured if things were about to get really bad someone would come running out of the hills and saying like you have to leave right now because so, so yeah they were there all the time taking care of it so but no one told us any evacuation plans at all yeah yeah that is wild what an experience jeez that's yeah. oh all right Back, back to Portugal. Back to Portugal. Let's let's dive in. What's your what's your favorite thing about your country? What do you love most about Portugal? 
the sun <laughs> I'm going to say the sun. I mean, it's just so good. I, I didn't, uh, we take it for granted. I'm going to tell you that. We do take it for granted. And even though, I mean, I, I was lucky enough to be in Australia in the summer, um, it rained all the time. Uh, it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't rain that much here. We have a lot of sunny days throughout the year. You know, so many people in Portugal that live in England, the first thing they say, because, you know, it's such a dark city, especially in the winter. Right. The first thing they say is always like I miss the sun so much. It's really good. Does it does it ever get cold in the winter? Like how how cold does it get in in Portugal? So for us it's super cold obviously, but after <laughs> after being in the Compared winter in New York, yeah. I didn't yeah. know what cold was. Yeah. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I forgot you went to New York City during the winter. Oh, oh I didn't know what cold was. So it was so you know, winter I don't know far in height. Yeah, so we have no, that. Okay. Celsius. I, yeah, I'll try to So so in that. Celsius, I would say Lisbon, it goes it never goes like under five degrees. Okay. Celsius. It'll never snow. So, sometimes it, never it does, snows. but it's not common. Yeah. Oh Lisbon it doesn't snow. It's actually snowing up north right now, which is uh, odd. It's not very huh. common. Intra like more north than uh, Porto. Or Porto's getting snow. Oh uh, so Uh, so I, I don't think the city is getting snow. It's more like the hills okay. close to the city. Okay. So and yeah, and Queen, but I'm not sure if you've heard of that one. Ah, uh, let's see. I'm looking. I'm pulling up a map. Lisbon, Porto. Okay. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Wow. I never. I really. I personally didn't think it would snow in Portugal. See, that's why you have these chats. You're gonna learn something new every day. Yeah. It's not very like, common, but it, it does happen a little bit. So it's not like. New York snow. <laughs> so it's okay. So it's very similar to Texas, where if it's like if it happens, it's kind of a surprise. I mean, it's not. The, yeah. I mean, it's quite rare if it does stick. Yeah, um, and so only a little bit. There's no skiing, I would say, right? There is like <laughs> one slope <laughs> 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 up north. They have like this little mountain, if you'd call that, and yeah. they they usually can ski, but it's like it's only just for the fun of it because it's not like. You, you're not going to pay to ski there, you know what I mean? Right, 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 right. Yeah, not, not like France or not like Italy, where you, or Switzerland, where you truly go to, to hit not the slope. Okay. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> one run, and you can just yeah. keep going back and forth. That's amazing. <laughs> What about, okay, one more question for you. What's one fact about Portugal that would surprise people? I think it's just what, what we just said, that we were, we were once so powerful, it, like such a big country in our days. No one really knows that. And also, one thing that I got asked all the time, especially in the United States, was if uh, Portugal was part of Spain and if we spoke Spanish. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Know. I don't know if that... <laughs> Let me give you a history lesson. <laughs> I don't know if that's, that would surprise people, maybe. But, uh, yeah, we're your own little country. <laughs> It is an independent country and a very powerful country. <laughs> that yes <laughs> oh my gosh that is yeah that's too funny guys it's it, as you said how we started the episode i think that was i think we we spoiled the the surprising fact so you're in yeah. the whole, portugal is the oldest country when it said when it comes to not changing their border correct? yeah exactly we have so, so it's, it was seems like i don't i don't want to lie about this but i'm guessing it was like 1300s So that's it's pretty old. Yeah. Yeah. That's But very I have another fact. I'm not sure if you know this actually. Uh -huh. Do you know that like an Hawaiian surfer surfed the biggest wave in Portugal? Like biggest wave ever that's been. Well, you guys, you got, I didn't, okay, I didn't necessarily know that, but I knew you guys had some massive waves. That's why people go down yeah. south because there's a, a specific beach that like it's insane. Yeah, to so, This beach, it's not down south, but we have a bunch oh, really? of them. But the one with yeah. the really big waves, it's in Nazaré. Ah, okay. Do you know how big the wave was? Like uh, 80 feet. Jeez, eight stories. That's insane. And he lived to tell the tale. That's even crazier. Yeah, that's insane. So I scary, like I don't know. 
That's why, yeah, that's a lot. I mean, if that wave come down on you, you're going to have to hold your breath at least a couple minutes, probably three to five minutes. That's, the, that's, that's some scary. serious, serious training. Man. Good. Okay. Another cool fun fact. See, I would have guessed Hawaii, but okay, Portugal, the, the world's largest wave ever surfed. That's pretty neat. Teresa, okay, so you're quite the traveler. This, this coronavirus has interrupted your plans a bit. What, do you know what your future plans are? What, what? Not at all. So, yeah. I mean, I don't – so I have to go back to school in September, right, because I took a year off school. Right. Uh, so it all depends if by then – I get the chance to travel somewhere, which I mean, okay. I, I don't think anyone knows. Yeah, no, I'm literally waiting. Like, I've got another month now to wait it exactly. out. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, if I do get the chance to go anywhere, I will literally go anywhere. Yeah. Um, so that's what I'm counting on, but I don't know. But after, so I still have like two, three years left of school. Probably not going to take another year off. But after yeah. finishing, I have to like this. This I have to finish this plan. You know, I have to finish what I started. <laughs> right, 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 right. The kind of important. Stick to the plan, but then uh, pick your your travels up, pick your adventures up, back up after after you get the education. Exactly. And tell everyone you're so you're studying to be a vet, correct? Yeah. And so you were traveling the world. You had externships in all of these countries that you're going to. So guys, she was mm -hmm. on an awesome journey. Went through the United States when we met, and uh, hopefully. You can get, you're supposed to, well, we're supposed to be in Asia together now. That offer is still on the table when these borders open up. If it's before school starts, come back. Let's do our diving together as we plan. Let's see the yeah. orangutans. Let's see the Komodo dragons um, because they'll be there. Like that, you know, luckily they'll still be there. Um, oh, you have to go there. So like, yeah. I felt, you know, there was, okay, in my mind, I think I told you this multiple times. If it was a perfect world, I found my tiger. So within a, a, a week, two weeks, it was going to be tigers, orangutans, and then we we're going to find Komodo dragons and then manta ray scuba diving. So we'll still get that back half. We'll still find those. It'll just be at a later date than planned. I'm just, I'm glad you're back home safe with your family. And uh, yeah. it's nice that none of us are, are stuck anywhere that we're alone because that would, that would be a very difficult situation. So you, you right, almost so. got stuck, didn't you? See, I, I got very, very close to getting stuck in the yeah. I, I did not realize how, like, where I was in the National Park, they really weren't talking about the country closing, but there was clearly an email that went out while I was in the park, and um, luckily the, the owner told me, hey, you should probably leave tonight, and then was able to literally get one of the last two seats out of the country, um, thanks to like Katie's it. good research. So it was meant to be, <laughs> I, I, I've got friends, I got some travel friends who are still in Nepal, Everything is totally closed. Well, actually, we're going to be doing an episode there soon. One of my couch chirping hosts from there, he, he's, uh, he's excited to talk about his country. But cool. all, what Nepal's known for is it's trekking, and they stopped <laughs> giving out their trekking passes. So all the treks are closed. Oh, no. So it, uh, like, it would be a very strange scenario to be in, um, in a foreign mm -hmm. country where not many people speak English and um, everything's closed up. So I'm glad I'm here in Singapore. Glad my quarantine ends tomorrow. Thank goodness. I'm so excited. It's been a long two weeks indoors. I'm excited to uh, get back outside and stay away from people, but uh, enjoy some enjoy some fresh air. So, Teresa, thank you so much for your time. Uh, it's thank it's you. so great to see you. I wish it was in person, but this is, I guess, as good as it gets now. What are yeah. your – okay, so the whole world is going to be watching this series. What would you like to say to the world? You know, it's – Difficult times, but it's 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 good to be home. Enjoy it. I'm trying to make the most of it, you know, just trying to – I advise this to everyone. Just do things that you wouldn't have the time to. Just make it worth it, you know? Absolutely. So, yeah, stay home, be safe, and we'll be back out there soon enough. Oh, for sure. Our normal will get back to normal soon enough. Guys, like, this isn't we're, – we're, okay, it's a blessing and a curse, right? You don't have the freedom to go exactly. to all these countries right now. But those are both with your families. Enjoy it. Because who knows? We don't ever get this amount of time together ever again. Exactly. It's so rare. So, yeah, enjoy enjoy those small moments. Even if you get on each other's nerves, appreciate that you have the chance to get on each other's nerves, right? Like, that, that's what it's <laughs> so all about. True. So, so, guys, with that, hope you enjoy this episode in Portugal. The next two episodes, let me pull it up real quick, in roughly 12 hours. That's so funny this happened. We're headed to Brazil. We're going to be talking to Hugo, uh, one of my couch surfing buddies that I met here in Singapore a few, a couple months back. And then uh, tomorrow evening, 24 hours, we're going to go to Sri Lanka. 
So back to another Asian country. Oh, so I'm excited. That is so funny how Portugal and then Brazil back to back. That is totally accidental, but clearly my subconscious was putting that together. With that, guys, <laughs> please stay inside, stay at home, wash your hands, and um, let's let's get through this together. So uh, with that, take care, Teresa. Always always great to see you, and I can't wait for our Me Asian too. adventures whenever that. I know. May be. It's gonna help. All right. <laughs> take care. <laughs> Bye. And we are live, episode 23, Get the Facts with Folan. Guys, today we're headed back to South America, back to one of my, when I say back, I've been there three times. This is truly number one on my list of uh, countries around the world. I absolutely love this country so, so much. Today, we are taking you to Brazil. Got one of my good friends who I met traveling here in Singapore, and uh, he has joined, so let me get him in let's see if hugo is ready let's see if this works waiting for him there he is hugo how's it going hey, man? how are you how are you i'm fine All right, thanks so, introduce yourself 